yourself if you're preparing for the NGMS what do I need to study? So my advice is for you to get an expert opinion. So an expert opinion should be one that comes from a person who has gone through the NCLEX and not the false prophets of the NGN. <laughs> there has been a preponderance of false prophecy related to the NGN on the internet. So anyway, so the first concept that I'd like to highlight is actually your needle prick injury. And let's have a functional concept related to this one. So management of needle prick injury includes administration of antiretroviral drugs like denofovir and intracetabine. Now these drugs should be given within the first 72 hours after the needle prick injury. So it's very, very important that prompt medical advice is given within the 24 hours that the client had middle prick injury. So usually, um, they also administer hepatitis B immune globulin to protect the patient. And it's very important that the first aid should include squeezing blood from the wound for five minutes under warm water. That should be warm running water. Then wash it with soap. It could be with Safeguard or Dove soap. Once again, using running water and then apply antiseptic cream and then a clean dressing should be used to wrap the wound. Now, it's very, very important also that the client should be monitored. And if necessary, as advised by the physician, they have to have tests once again, if necessary. Next. Compartment syndrome. So compartment syndrome is a complication that's associated with the use of a cast or a tight bandage, or it could also occur as a complication of high impact exercises, like for example, running. So in compartment syndrome, there's an increased pressure inside the muscle and this increased pressure would restrict blood flow to that specific area. So here's a functional concept to help us. So compartment syndrome can be, can be manifested by the six Ps. So pain, it's actually the best indicator. And then pallor, pay particular attention to how the skin looks like. So it's usually pale. Then pulselessness, so that means obstruction of arterial circulation. Then paresthesia, which could be manifested by a tingling sensation, which means there could be a nerve that has been compressed. And then paralysis or inability to move or lack of function of the affected extremity and poikilothermia, which means inability to regulate core body temperature. So there could be a discrepancy in terms of the temperature of the extremity that's affected in relation to the core temperature of the body. Now, if compartment syndrome occurs, it's very important that this should be reported to the physician. This is a medical emergency. And while doing so, it's also important for the nurse to take note that the extremity that's affected should be elevated, okay, in order to promote circulation. Okay, now let's move on to your personal protective equipment for contact precautions. Now, this would usually just entail wearing two things, gloves and gown. But take note, here's a functional concept to make it easy for you. Contact precautions require wearing gloves and gown before room entry and its removal at the point of exit. So which simply means you have to wear the gloves and the gown before entering the client's room. Then you have to remove it at your point of exit. Now, when do you need this? You need this when you're dealing with clients with C. diff, Clostridium difficile, or rotavirus. Now, both would be manifested through diarrhea or when your patient is wearing diapers, okay? You also implement contact precautions if your patient has an open wound, okay? And if your patient manifests symptoms of respiratory syncytial virus that includes your fever, cough, wheezing, and of course, your fast breathing. Now, all of this, including your MRSA, requires your contact precautions. So it's very important, once again, to wear gloves and count. Okay, and then the second question that you have to ask yourself, how should you study for NGN? You need a set of tools that are proven and that have given results. 
as a friend, a coworker, or even your family and relatives. Ask what they use, and I'm sure, pretty sure, they've used one of our tools. So I asked one of our passers, James, which part of a review helped you the most. He says it's a boot camp, and overall, it's the functional concept and syndromic approach, plus the quick fix and the core shell. Now, all of these are included in our package of teaching and learning tools in our system. So this is actually our core shell. And this has been part of the success strategies of a lot of NGM passers. And of course, the third element should be a conducive environment that should help you keep your focus. And that's how we do it here at the Ray Gapo system using our NGN simulation room and very comfortable classes. So if you have limited budget, may I invite you to join our next generation NPLEX R in Flex, the most flexible test preparation class for the NPLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499 and the fee includes our magic recipe for success, the three books, nursing reminder sheet, NCLEX 311, which is a favorite of a lot of nurses. And of course, my quick fix in pharma, now, once again, if you want to pass the test the easy way, do it the Ray Gapos way. So this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapos saying thank you and claim it. Congratulations in advance. See you in my next video. actually on the concept of lumbar puncture. Now, what are the things that we need to remember related to lumbar puncture? The site is definitely between lumbar three and lumbar four because the spinal nerves would usually end at lumbar two. So you, the doctor cannot insert the needle between lumbar two and lumbar three because that could potentially hit your uh, spinal nerves. So the safe site would be between lumbar three and lumbar four. Now your lumbar puncture is usually done in order to check the CSF characteristics. Now, remember that your cerebrospinal fluid or CSF is approximately 100 to 200 ml, and it is high in glucose, and it's usually clear. However, okay, cloudy um, samples could mean that the patient could be having infection of the meninges, so meningitis, or inflammation and infection of the brain or encephalitis, or when there's reddish um, liquid that has mixed with the CSF, that this could mean that there's hemorrhage. And of course, your CSF analysis could also help diagnose autoimmune conditions like Guillain-Barre syndrome and multiple sclerosis. Now, the primary concern of clients who are supposed to undergo lumbar puncture is what will they feel? So you just have to tell your client that you might feel as if someone is pushing your back. So don't use the word pain because anticipation of pain may increase the discomfort or pain experience of the client. And then um, during the test, the client will be on a C position or sideline position to expose the back. And after the test, the client should be should lie flat for one to two hours. It used to be six to eight hours. Now it's one to two hours. No pillows are allowed. And the supine positioning for the first two hours after the test is done in order to prevent spinal headache. So pay particular attention to the fact that during the, the, the procedure, the patient is positioned side lying. And after the procedure, the client must be placed on supine position for one to two hours, no pillows are allowed. So for example, if you have a male client and the wife says, can I bring two pillows for my husband's use? If it's gonna be for the head, then that's not allowed. But if it's just gonna be um, for the side of the patient where they can place their hands on it, then that could be allowed. So no pillows underneath the head after the test. The client must remain flat for one to two hours. So that's one thing that you have to highlight in terms of your 
client's care post lumbar puncture. So join our hundreds and thousands of nurses who pass the NGN through the Ray A GAPO system. So these are proofs beyond reasonable doubt that our system works. And a lot of nurses find it as the best in the world. So those of you who would want to have a short course or a quick fix, for passing NGN, join me on January 8 to 20. That's going to be at the Mount Crest Hotel, Capus Baguio. And we're going to have our boot camp for 2024. That's going to be for the first quarter of 2024. So join me and experience a technology-enhanced learning environment like no other. We'll make you pass the test just in 10 days. And if you need more, we'll provide you more with no additional fees, okay? So the next NCLEX RN alert that we'll have for this session will be your alcohol withdrawal. Now, what are the things that you have to remember related to alcohol withdrawal? First and foremost, note that the onset of symptoms could be early, and it could be as early as six hours after the patient's last drink. Or it could also be late, and it could be as late as a week after the patient's last dream. So what are the symptoms that could occur um, early? So remember the code SINS, okay? S-I-N-S. So S, shaky hands, I, insomnia, N, nervousness, and S, sweating. So this group of symptoms could occur within the first six hours after the client's last dream. Now, on the 12 to the 48 hours or as late as a week after the client's last drink, the client may experience your delirium tremens that could come with delusions as well as, remember, hits, hallucinations, which could come in visual hallucinations. They would fear shadows. That's why you have to provide them a well-lighted room that's quiet. And it could also uh, come in the form of tactile hallucinations. So the patient would actually tell you bugs are crawling underneath the skin. No, your intervention as a nurse is to present reality and tell the client that you don't see bugs. However, you acknowledge that it's real for them. However, you don't see it. Then you have eye increased vital signs. So there could be elevated blood pressure, elevated pulse rate, then T tremors, coarse tremors occurs in alcohol withdrawal syndrome, and then S seizures, and sweatings. Now, all of these symptoms could occur as early as 12 hours after the client's last drink or a week after the client's last drink. So your intervention is to calm the patient and provide them with quiet room because alcohol is slowly metabolized in the body. So the only intervention that you can do is to tell the client or reassure the client that eventually the symptoms would go away. They just can initially slip it off. So they just have to have a good night's rest. Then eventually the signs and symptoms will decrease. And aside from providing a comfortable room, you also would need to increase fluids um, like providing them sparkling water, um, kombucha or low fat milk including a diet that's high in carbohydrates. So snacks that could, you could provide the patient could be in the form of pretzels or apple slices. So this would help the client cope with alcohol withdrawal, okay? And the next important thing that you have to consider if you are preparing for the NGN is you have to learn how to study with technology. Now, there's one student who came to me and he told me about his experience that sometimes what he has in mind is correct. But the moment he moves the cursor in the computer, so he's not adept at doing the click at the right time and at the right um, part of the screen. So taking the NGN requires more than knowing your facts. It requires you to possess your skill in terms of navigating a technology-enhanced testing environment. So it's best that you learn with technology. Here at the Ray Gapo system, we're the only one in the world that has an NGN simulation room. 
Okay. So I asked one of our students, which one helped you the most? This is what she says. Um, I set aside S that pertains to a book, and then I already used yours, okay? So specifically, she's talking about the pharmacology, quick fix in pharmacology, and NCLEX 311. So NCLEX 311, the 24-hour guide for passing the NCLEX RN is very useful. It's actually the Bible of NGN passers. And this is the local edition of my internationally published book published by Jones and Bartlett USA. And that's your NCLEX RN in a flash. You can actually check it at Amazon and it's pretty pricey in the US. But here, if you are in our system, you get a free copy of NCLEX 311, which is the local edition of NCLEX RN in a flash. So I asked one another student, what book helped you the most? And he says, 311, sir, especially the key points in the book. So in NCLEX 311, you have a uh, nice presentation of concepts from the functional concepts to sample questions to the answers to the rational and the pointers that one of our learners is trying to, uh, is, is talking about, okay? He's trying to highlight it. And of course, it's also the Bible of our international students. NCLEX are in a flash in the US and CLEX 311 in the Philippines. That's a part of our learning tools that are available only at the Regapo system. Remember you have here Lippincott, Saunders, and of course, ABCs of passing by Regapos. So it's always nice to be up there with the greats in NCLEX R and review. And this is a picture of our simulation laboratory. Okay, so, Here's another student who say, Sir Ray, thank you for these books. Truly concise, direct to the point, and very organized. So I also asked her, were the core shells helpful? And this is what she says. Yes, super. Actually, your core shells are more difficult than the actual test. Okay? So that's the kind of training we have there. Um, here is our screenshot of the contents of our core shells. It contains all the subject areas that are being tested in the actual test, like safety and infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion and maintenance, management of care, pharmacological and parenteral therapies, physiological adaptation one, two, and three, psychosocial integrity one, and of course, your management or reduction of risk potential, okay? So we covered practically all, and you have eight different activities per score, per course shell, and these core shells are being updated on a monthly basis. And the most important thing while preparing for NGN, you have to be in a very conducive environment because a conducive environment should keep your sense of focus. And here at the Ray Gapo system, we are the only one in the world with our NGN simulator that's produced by our own system. And of course, we keep the numbers comfortable in our class. So may I invite everyone to avail of the next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499 pesos, or that's less than $100, okay? Your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank and three books, NGN strategies and sample questions by Dr. Ray Gapus, and of course, the quick fix sessions. And I'd like to share with you a picture of the interface or the homepage of our official web website, the raygapusreviewsystem.com. So ace your exam with expert instruction and advanced technology. So here is an advice from our passer who is a PhD prepared nurse. Mr. Conrad Katimbang, who passed the NGN through our system. This is what he has to say. Believe in yourself, learn to trust, burn your midnight, midnight oil, sacrifice, make no excuses, find a job or find a way to join the boot camp or quick fix at all costs. Read, read, read 311 and farm a book five times and fail not to watch the course shell. Indulge in Pecha that's um, activity number four in the course shell, it's one of the favorites of nurses and NGN samples. Give it your 200% and leave the rest to Almighty. All the best. Thank you so much. He said that in Filipino.
Okay, salamat po so much. That's Conrad C. Katimbang, USRN. So, join him and thousands of others and pass the NGN on your first try. We have a three-day program, a 10-day program, a comprehensive functional concepts discussion that could be just on weekdays or weekends. It's very flexible and it would just require five hours of your day. So once again, this has been your mentor, your fuck check buddy, Ray Gapo saying thank you and see you in my next video. Take care. I'd like to ask you a question. What are the things that you need to study? If you don't know the things that you need to study, then you are not yet prepared to take the test. So it's best for you to get an expert's opinion. Now, the expert should be someone who can tell you how to study. It's very important that you need to have that sense of direction when you're preparing for the next generation NCLEX, okay? So our first NCLEX RN alert would be for your RSV or your respiratory syncytial virus. Okay, now, what is it? So it's actually an infection of the airway and the lungs. It's common among children. And what are the things that you need to remember? First, it requires contact precautions because that's the droplet sp spreads to coughing or sneezing, which simply means your healthcare providers providing care to a client with RSV should wear your personal protective equipment. And when we say PPEs, what are the things that we need to highlight? First, they should wear your fluid resistant or type 11R surgical mask. What does that mean? Well, your fluid resistant mask is repellent to lay, uh, it has a layer that is repellent to droplets. So in essence, it's best also to wear your fluid resistant surgical mask um, together with a face shield. So that's to ensure that your droplets don't get into your into the mucous membranes of the eyes or even the nose, okay? Now, the second thing that you have to wear as a healthcare provider should be your single-use gown and your single-use gloves. So once again, don't forget your RSV requires your contact precautions, okay? So what, what usually develops in RSV, there will be inflammation of the bronchial wall and because of this um, inflammation, there will be excessive mucus secretion that may potentially obstruct the airway of the child. So this leads now to the croupy or seal like bark cough, or they call it barking cough, that's due to partial obstruction of the airways. And this comes with low-grade fever. Now, these two main manifestations, the croupy or the seal bark cough plus low-grade fever, Think about RSV and think about the PPE. You have your fluid resistant surgical mask, and then you have your single use gown, and of course, your single use gloves. Okay, so let's move on. For RSV, just remember your dream car. Okay, this is my toy car. Okay, remember your BMW Z4 convertible. Why? Remember the manifestations pertain to BMW, bluish skin color because of decreased oxygenation. B, breathing that is rapid, short, and difficult, okay? So it's not actually deep. So you have short breaths that are, um, re that's requiring the patient to have more efforts at taking in the air because of the obstruction brought about by the accumulation of mucus in the airways. And of course, M, mild cold-like symptoms like stuffy nose, and W, wheezing and nasal flaring. Now pay particular attention to the fact that if initially there are wheezes and then eventually the wheezing disappears, it could simply mean that the airway obstruction has worsened. So wheezing is due to partial airway obstruction. When the airways are completely obstructed, so the wheeze disappears. So which simply means that 
the absence of wheezing does not necessarily indicate a sign of improvement. In fact, it could be a sign of a worsening condition and should therefore be reported to the healthcare provider. Okay, so for RSV, just remember your dream car. Once again, your BMW Z4. That's me driving my favorite toy car. Okay, and antibiotics do not treat your RSV because it's caused by a virus. So the good thing is when you have a mild infection, it could even go away even without treatment. However, if the condition requires treatment, this requires three things. Remember the code RSV requires administration of oxygen and moist or humidified air. And then administration of your antiviral agent, ribavirin, through aerosol. Then S synergies or your palivizumab. It's approved for the prevention of RSV disease in children who are younger than two years old or who are at risk for serious RSV disease. And of course, the venous infusion of fluids or your IV fluids plus your ventilatory support. Remember, RSV, okay, and BMW to study or to focus on. You need to get an expert opinion. And at the Ray A. Gapus test preparation system, we provide you with very competent, very young, and very able mentors who are trained on our specific success recipe for the NGN NCLEX. And that's going to be your functional concepts method. Okay, so let's begin with our first NCLEX NGN alert. And that's going to be melanoma. Now, when you say melanoma, how do we explain this to our clients? we would need to tell our clients that melanoma is a form of cancer that affects the cells that color the skin. Now, the question is, what are the common risk factors? Remember the code WHAT, W-H-A-T. So W, this occurs when a patient has a weak immune system. H, there's history in the family. A, a darker skin like Hispanic clients or a lighter skin like those who are in um, Northern America or the blonde or the Europeans. And of course, T, um, tanning lumps, especially those who would want their skin to be tanned or direct sun exposure, especially those who love to go under the sun and do a sun, sun bathing between 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. So how would we know that a patient indeed is suffering from melanoma? First, you need to assess for A, B, C, D, E. Now, A means there's a symmetrical shape of um, the mole that could be found either on the face, on the arms, on the legs, or even on the palms and the soles of the feet. Okay, so these are important to um, note, especially when you're assessing a patient with melanoma. The second important thing that you have to assess, A, remember, a symmetrical shape, B, border that is irregular. So it's not properly bordered. The shape could be irregular. And C, the color is variegated. When you say the color is variegated, the color is not consistent. There are areas in which the color could be darker. There are areas in which the color could be lighter. And D, diameter. So it's usually larger than one fourth inch or larger than the eraser of a pencil. And then E, it evolves over time. So what are therefore the things on the other hand that would tell us that the mole could be normal? Well, one, the size could be smaller than one fourth inch or the eraser of the pencil. It could be bordered. It could either be oval or round. And you have to pay particular attention to the fact that there's no unusual sensation, there's no pruritus, or um, there's no change in how it appears, and the color is consistent, okay? So when these things are present, it simply means that that mole could be normal. Okay, now treatment of melanoma would usually involve um, 
chemotherapy and surgery. So we need to remind our clients about the things that they have to observe while undergoing these types of treatment. Now, now your polysomnography is a diagnostic test that is non-invasive. It doesn't hurt. The test would usually take around 12 hours. And there are things that we need to tell our patients. First, the test does not involve, once again, it does not involve sedation. So no sedation required. It does not involve extraction of specimen for ABG. So it's non-invasive. And it will not monitor nocturnal penile tumescence or nocturnal erection of the penis, although it used to be part of the test. Now, no more. Okay, so on the other hand, what does your polysomnography include? So it includes your EEG. So it would give information about how your brain works while you're sleeping, specifically the brain waves, EMG. So the electrical activity of the muscles, that's your electromyogram, and then your ECG, electrocardiogram, your heart activity, including your heart rate. And of course, EOG, your electro oculogram, okay, meaning the eye movement. And it would also involve measurement of your oxygen saturation using your pulse oximeter, which is a non-invasive procedure, which means one of your fingers would just be attached to your pulse oximeter. Okay, so in essence, your polysomnography monitors the code Bob Hell. B, brain function. O, oxygen saturation. B, breathing. H, heart rate, E, eye movement, and L, leg movement, okay? So this test would definitely um, be conducted while there are certain attachments to the body. So what will we tell our clients? First, there's gonna be a specialized belt that is placed around the chest that would help monitor your breathing, okay? And then of course, there's gonna be stickers or we call them stickers, I'm using layman's term, but these are actually your electrodes that are placed on the face, on the legs and on the hand. And the most important thing that we have to assure our patient about this test is that these stickers or electrodes won't hurt a bit. So once again, there is no pain in this test. So this test would help the physician diagnose the presence of obstructive sleep apnea. And don't forget, reassure the patient that the test will not hurt. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing that I'd like to share with you. The third concept that I am about to discuss and to share everyone um, for this specific set of concepts for our NGN pointer set number 28, eardrop administration. Now, the first step before you administer your eardrops is to position the client on the unaffected side. So when you have a toddler, you make sure that you explain the procedure in a manner that they understand. And for toddlers and preschoolers, you have to give them a sense of control. How? You have to ask them if they will receive eardrops in both ears, meaning the left and the right ear, then you have to ask them, which ear would you want the eardrops first? Is it on the left or on the right ear? And you have to ask the question to enable them to have a sense of control. And the most important thing is explain the procedure in such a way that they would be able to understand it. Now, there's a specific guide when you are to administer eardrops to toddlers. If the toddler is below three years old, then you need to pull the earlobe down and back. But for children who are three years old and above, you need to pull the upper part of the ear up and back. So below three years old, down and back. Three years old and above, up, upper part of the ear and back. And then administer the drug along the side, the side, of the ear canal. And of course, you have to let the child assume the position for a couple of minutes such that the medication that you administered should be or must be absorbed before the child turns over to the other side. Okay? So it's very important to note those things. 
And we'd like to congratulate our NGN pastors who are now numbering in the thousands around the world. So give us a ring at the Ray Gapo system if you want to join them. And of course, if you want to study with technology, we're the only review system in the world that creates our system of tools that have been proven effective across all races in the whole wide world, okay? So I asked one of our students, which part of our review help you the most? This is what he has to say, bootcamp, sir. But overall, the functional concepts and the syndromic approach, those were the things that really helped me, especially for the difficult questions. Plus, quick fix and core shell. Um, this served as my booster for me, okay? And he said that in Filipino, okay? So this is actually the boot camp. And the next boot camp is going to happen again at the Mount Crest Hotel in the city of Pines, the summer capital of the Philippines, where the weather is very conducive for learning. It's going to be from January 8th to 20, 2024. And that's going to be exclusively with me, okay? Your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus. I'll see you. And this is actually the course shells that we are offering. If you want to avail of this separately, you have unlimited access. All you have to do is to open it. And each part of the course shell has a specific lesson. So you can do short quizzes, long quizzes, NGN tests, NGN videos, content videos, name it. We have everything in our course shell. So... The most important thing is when you're preparing for the NCLEX review, you are supposed to stay in a conducive environment because it should keep your focus. It will help you retain concepts. And we are proud to say that at the Ray Gapo system, we maintain our classrooms as conducive as it can be with our very reasonable fee. And of course, we're the only, we're the only review system in the world that has our own NGN simulation room. They don't have it. We have it, okay? Experience the difference with the Ray Gapo system. So may I invite you to avail of the next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. So you have your choice for live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank and three books, NGN strategies and sample questions from me, and of course, your quick fix sessions. The fee starts at 3,499, inclusive of three important books. No need to buy them separately. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapus, joining you for our NGN session number 28. I'll see you in my next video. Take care and God bless. Generation and what says, what are the things that you need to study? Only a real expert knows that. And an expert is not just anybody who just know how to deliver lectures. No. NGN will ask you more than the facts. NGN will ask you more than the things that you've memorized. Okay? So, let's begin with our first NCLEX RN alert, and that's going to be your cilium. Now, the indication for cilium is constipation. Why? Because your psyllium is a fiber supplement and it is a bulk forming laxative. So as a bulk forming laxative, there's one important thing that you have to instruct your client to do. They have to take the supplement with water, one whole glass of water. So they need to take six to eight glass of fluids per day because if they don't take it with fluids, Psyllium will absorb water from the gastrointestinal tract and may potentially obstruct the GIT and even may potentially cause choking. So a common side effect of psyllium is bloating. Now, the medication can be taken with or without meal. So it really doesn't matter. Is it safe to take it every day? Yes, but if your objective is just to cleanse your bowels, then it's best taken for three times a week only, okay? Now, when your patient is taking your psyllium, remember that psyllium can potentially interact with three common drugs. And remember the code CAD, C-A-D, C-cholestyramine, which is a bile acid sequestrant. Your cholestyramine also causes constipation and may reverse the effects of psyllium. What cholestyramine uh, does is that 
It prevents the accumulation of bile salts in the skin in a client with cholelithiasis. Therefore, it decreases pruritus. Then CA, letter A, you have your amitriptyline that is a tricyclic antidepressant that may potentially cause palpitation. So if your patient's taking amitriptyline, you better check the client's ECG tracing before giving the drug. And your amitriptyline is slow acting. The initial effects would occur two to three weeks after and the full therapeutic effects would occur three to four weeks after. Now, amitriptyline, even if it's a tricyclic antidepressant, is also used in patients with neuropathic pain. So in clients with cancer, your tricyclic antidepressant amitriptyline is used to decrease pain. So your parameter of assessment for amitriptyline should be the pain level of the patient if it was given to a patient who is suffering from cancer. Next, CAD, digoxin. Take note that your cilium may interact with digoxin. It's a cardiac glycoside. And if your patient's taking digoxin, check the heart rate. There has to be a minimum of 60 beats per minute. And if your patient is taking digoxin, take note that digoxin toxicity can develop. And it's usually manifested by a greenish or yellowish green vision medically described as santopsia. So pay particular attention if your patients all of a sudden develops visual abnormalities and verbalizes discoloration of the things around them or within their immediate environment. And of course, your digoxin may potentially cause bradycardia. And sometimes when there's digoxin toxicity, they may exhibit persistent anorexia. Since digoxin increases the force of cardiac contraction, it's essential that the effects of digoxin must be evaluated in terms of the urine output if it is given in a client with congestive heart failure. So take note, digoxin is primarily excreted by the kidneys. So it's very important to check on the urine output and the serum creatinine and of course, the blood urea nitrogen levels. If these laboratory tests are elevated, therefore, clarify before giving the next dose. Because if you proceed in giving the next dose despite an elevated creatinine, an elevated BUN, or a decreased urine output, then you could be held liable for malpractice. Now, what about if the patient is having diabetes mellitus? Can they safely take psyllium? Um, Psyllium interacts with insulin and psyllium may potentially worsen hypoglycemia. Therefore, if your patient is taking medications for diabetes, it's very important that before giving the psyllium, you have to clarify it with the physician. Okay, so I just hope you're learning with our first NCLEX RN alert. The NCLEX RN alert is actually your premature ventricular contractions. Now take note, how would you recognize the presence of a PVC? Okay, On the ECG tracing, you would notice an inverted P wave, or this is what we call retrograde P wave. Okay, So how do you explain premature ventricular contractions to your patients? Just tell your patients that they are having extra heartbeats. So the common sign, which is also the first sign of premature ventricular contractions would be there will be pounding on the chest or jumping heart rate, medically described as palpitations. So is this expected? Is this harmful? Well, if it just happened once, it would just require further observation. However, if you have five or more in one minute, on a routine ECG, what do you need to assess the patient for? Assess the patient for the factors that could potentially have triggered your PVC. And the two common factors would be CS, caffeine and smoking. So instruct the client to stop drinking caffeinated beverages like energy drinks or coffee, and then stop smoking or better yet quit smoking. Now, the danger of premature ventricular contractions when it occurs that frequent, like more than three or more than five in one minute routine ECG, is the fact that it could develop into ventricular tachycardia and eventually to ventricular fibrillation, 
which is the most dangerous type of arrhythmia. Okay? Now, what's the first line of treatment for premature ventricular contractions? As a nurse, what should you anticipate the doctor to order? What would you prepare? So prepare your beta blockers, okay? Specifically your carvedilol. Now take note, carvedilol may potentially worsen hypoglycemia if your patient is receiving insulin glargine. So you have to clarify that combination with the physician. And of course, another beta blocker would be your metoprolol. Take note that your beta blockers may potentially trigger bronchospasm. So assess if the patient is um, diagnosed to be having history of asthma or has had asthmatic attack recently. So you have to clarify the doctor's order before giving it to an asthmatic patient. And of course, antiarrhythmic medications like amiodarone or flakinide, these are the things that you have to anticipate the doctor, okay, to order for the patient. So the treatment, remember, let's have a code. Remember, CLAP, okay? So prepare carvedilol, lidocaine, amiodarone, and propranolol, okay? And the most important thing that you have to remember is which among these drugs should be used First, remember you always begin with the beta blocker. So once again, carvedilol, lidocaine, amiodarone, and propranolol. With these combinations of drugs, what type of, sorry, which specific vital sign should you monitor? Two things. One would be the pulse rate because your beta blockers could decrease the pulse rate. And two definitely would be the blood pressure because your beta blockers would also potentially cause hypotension. Okay, so remember your PVCs, it's not harmful if it occurs in isolation, but when you have three to five of it in a one minute routine ECG, then you have to refer that immediately to the physician. So join our hundreds of thousands of pastors from more than 30 countries worldwide. And recently we have a 60 year old who passed NGN through our program, joined by more and more and more and more and more of these passers. Okay, so next important thing that you have to remember for your test would be acute kidney injury. Now, what are the things that you have to remember related to acute kidney injury? First and foremost, how do you explain to the patient when the doctor tells the patient you have acute kidney injury? Tell the patient that acute in acute kidney injury, your kidneys suddenly stop working, as simple as that, okay? Now, if the patient would ask you, is it reversible? Yes, it is reversible, okay? And when the patient would tell you what could have caused it, remember DID, D-I-D, okay? The first letter in that acronym DID means decreased blood flow. So acute kidney injury could be associated with conditions that potentially could lead to shock, Okay, when your patient's having hypovolemia or bleeding, and then I, infection. And these infections could actually lead to strictures that could block the flow of urine. Okay, so take note, decrease blood flow, infections that could lead to strictures that could block the flow of urine. And the last D, damage due to medications as well as autoimmune conditions. Now, what medications can potentially cause acute kidney injury? the nephrotoxic drugs. Examples would be your aminoglycosides, okay, streptomycin, neomycin. So you need to check if the patient all of a sudden develops oliguria, meaning a decreased urine output, check if the patient could be taking any of these drugs. And if a patient has been diagnosed with acute kidney injury and the client develops secondary infection and the doctor orders neomycin, clarify the order before giving it to the client as your aminoglycosides are nephrotoxic and could therefore worsen the acute kidney injury of the patient. Okay, now let's try to figure out what could have brought the patient to the hospital. If the patient is indeed suffering from acute kidney injury, note for changes in urination. Usually there's decreased urine output and then another sign of faulty kidney function would be swelling. So you have edema of the face, the arms, and the legs. And of course, because your kidneys are responsible for the production of your erythropoietin, 
releasing factor that stimulates the bone marrow to produce more red blood cells. In kidney injury, eventually the patient develops anemia. So fatigue is a common manifestation of acute kidney injury. Now, if the patient would ask you what type of diet should I be in if I have this type of kidney condition? So the diet should be low phosphorus. When you say low phosphorus, avoid those that are high in phosphorus like tofu, okay? Like, um, sorry, avoid those that do not, sorry. When your patient is in a low phosphorus diet, what can you serve the patient? Tofu and fish, okay? So avoid those that contains your phosphorus. So to be safe, just serve fish and tofu as their diet, okay? So the next question that we need to address is how do you study for NGN? Study using technology. You have to learn how to navigate the different types of questions using a simulator. And here at the Ray Gapo system, we have a, a lot of tools to assist you. We have NCLEX RN in a flash, the local title here in the Philippines is NCLEX 311. Of course, the US title is produced by published brother by Jones and Bartlett USA. So here's our passer from um, Nigeria. I asked her. Lester, which part of our review helped you the most? And she says, I will say the 311 book. Okay. So this is NCLEX 311, which is given for free to those who are enrolled in our full package. The good thing about the book is you have the functional concept, all 311. That's why it's called NCLEX 311. And you have some pointers here, sample question, which is very essential, the answer, and then the rationale. Now, the international title of NCLEX 311 is NCLEX RNA Flash. Okay, look who is the author, that's me, and it's published by Jones and Bartlett USA. So they have the same content, okay? This is the Philippine edition, this is the international edition. The difference is, of course, the international edition is colored. It comes in full color. And of course, Lester also says, the comprehensive classes were also very reassuring. So our comprehensive review could last um, two to three months if you're doing it on weekends. If you're doing it every day, it would last for an average of 20 to 30 days and take note, okay? You can sit in in unlimited frequency, okay? So the most important thing, according to Lester, is of course the core shells. Now the core shells, organizes your Q-Bank, your videos into one. And this is also given for free access and limited access if you are enrolled in our full package review. So once again, it contains all the subject areas in um, NGN. So it's covered safety and infection control, basic care and comfort, health promotion and maintenance, management of care, pharmacological and parenteral therapies, physiological adaptation one, two, and three, and of course, reduction of risk potential and psychosocial integrity. Okay, next, when you're preparing for the test, you have to be in a conducive environment. That's the third, but the most important preparation strategy for the NGN. Here at the Ray Gapo system, our class is in a comfortable environment comfortable size, and we have our NGN simulation room with one student to one computer, okay? So may I invite you to avail of our next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499. You can choose between weekdays and weekends, morning session or afternoon session. It's your choice of live face-to-face -face class live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded videos, okay? And of course, QBank and the three books that includes my NCLEX 311 plus the strategies and the quick fix sessions, which, could, which will be done for three days within the month of your test. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapo, saying thank you for joining me in this learning and teaching session. On to my next video. If you want to shut down at number 85, 
watch out for my next one. Take care and don't forget, Jesus loves you. What do we need to study? First and foremost, when you're studying for NGN or Next Generation NPLEX RM, you have to get an expert's opinion. The expert who should guide you should be a person who has been through all the phases of the licensure exam. Not just anyone who knows how to deliver lectures. They have to primarily be able to teach you how you will prepare for the test. Okay. So our first NCLEX alert is actually about Kava. Okay. So Kava, just like the Philippine word Kaba, meaning you're nervous. So Kava, okay, is actually an anti-anxiety agent. Okay. Now, what is the implication of taking this herbal remedy? First and foremost, you have to know the fact that your kava grows in um, the Pacific areas like Hawaii or the Samoas. Okay? It is called Piper Mythisticum. So in essence, if your patient is coming from Hawaii or the American Samoa, Pay particular attention to the fact that if they're coming in for anxiety disorders, they could potentially have taken kava. And what's the implication? You never combine kava with our minor tranquilizers or benzodiazepines like your alprazolam or diazepam. Why? When your kava and alprazolam are taken together, they could potentially depress the respiratory system because kava is a sedative. So it's primarily indicated for the short-term treatment of anxiety disorders. Now, what laboratory data do we need to check if the patient's taking CAVA? We need to check the liver function test, the AST and the ALT. Why? CAVA is hepatotoxic. Therefore, you have to assess the patient for signs and symptoms of hepatotoxicity like persistent anorexia, nausea and vomiting, and the all-important yellowing of the sclera or the skin that your jaundice. If you get to see any of this in your client, then you better clarify if the client has taken kava, okay? So for a patient taking kava, never ever give this with your minor tranquilizers or benzodiazepines. For all you know, kava may worsen respiratory depression. Therefore, if you encounter a question that says, if the patient who is coming from Hawaii comes in due to anxiety attack, which question should the nurse ask the client? Ask the client, are you taking kava? And if the patient is taking kava, which doctor's order should the nurse need to clarify if the doctor orders alprazolam or diazepam? Because a combination of alprazolam and kava or alprazolam or sorry, or the yazipam and kava may potentially lead to respiratory depression. Remember, the respiratory system is the primary target system of the adverse effect of kava. Okay, now our next NCLEX RN alert is actually the herbal remedy, Jinkgo Biloba. Now, Jinkgo Biloba is a blood thinner. And you find this plant, it grows in East Asia. So if you have an Asian client who comes to you complaining of um, bleeding, you may want to ask if the patient's taking Jinkgo Biloba. That's the implication. So um, what are the uses of Jinkgo Biloba? It's used to treat anxiety, glaucoma, take note, dementia, specifically Alzheimer's disease. And of course, it increases sexual functioning. Now, Please pay particular attention to the fact that your Jinkgo biloba is used as a treatment for Alzheimer's. It's not a cure. In essence, it will just improve on the symptoms. So it will potentially decrease the symptoms, but it will not bring the person to a normal state of health. Now, if your patient's taking Jinkgo biloba, you have to assess if the patient's taking your antidepressants, specifically your SSRI like fluoxetine. Why? Because a combination of Jinkgo biloba and your fluoxetin can potentially lead to serotonin toxicity, which is potentially fatal. 
And when you speak of serotonin toxicity, your patient will have hyperthermia, elevated temperature above 38.5 degrees centigrade, muscle rigidity, diaphoresis, shivering, seizures. Okay? And then your Jinkgo biloba is not indicated for pregnant clients and those with epilepsy. Now, how about clients with diabetes? Remember, before you give or suggest the use of Jinkgo biloba to a client with diabetes mellitus, you have to instruct the client to clarify it with their physician first, okay? So the most common side effects of Jinkgo biloba will include your nausea and vomiting. Once again, if we talk about Jinkgo biloba, it could potentially worsen bleeding because it thins the blood. So before giving Jinkgo biloba, assess if the patient's taking your aspirin, your heparin, your warfarin, rivaroxaban, or the bigatran. All of these drugs are anticoagulants. Or if the patient's taking Jinkgo biloba and the doctor orders warfarin, clarify the doctor's order before giving it. Because a combination of Jinkgo biloba and the drugs that may potentially cause bleeding may lead to a worsened bleeding risk. Okay, so let's move on. Now, join our hundreds of thousands of pastors all over the world. Our system is now servicing nurses in more than 30 countries worldwide. And we have here a 60-year-old who recently passed NGN with our program. And she's with all of these pastors from our program. Okay, increasing in numbers. Okay, and our third pointers specifically would be on those facts related to your echinacea. This is pronounced as echinacea. Okay, now echinacea has six different uses. Primarily, it is an immune system booster. So in essence, it supports the immune system. So it is now actually also used as over-the-counter cold remedy or flu remedy. And then it could also be used in the treatment of migraine headaches, as well as it can potentially decrease your blood sugar level, much like your Dihuang, okay? Because Dihuang is also an herbal remedy that decreases the blood sugar levels. So if your patient's taking Echinacea or Dihuang, you might want to monitor the sugar levels of the client. Next important thing is that your Echinacea could also be used to treat anxiety as well as to decrease inflammation. But take note that since this supports the immune system, this is not indicated for clients with autoimmune disorders like multiple sclerosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, or rheumatoid arthritis. Now, a common side effect with the use of echinacea is the appearance of your rashes. So it's very important to tell the patient that this side effect <clears throat> is expected when a patient's taking echinacea. And you don't give echinacea if your patient is having an autoimmune condition. Now, the second thing or question that we need to ask ourselves if we are preparing for the next generation NCLEX would be, how do we study? You always have to learn how to study with technology. A lot of nurses who are in my class would usually have mistakes that are not related to their inability to remember facts, but rather the mistakes were committed because they don't know how to navigate technology. Here at the Ray Gapo system, we have our set of learning tools like NCLEX R and Nina Flash available in Amazon. The local title in the Philippines is NCLEX 311. And then we have several programs like I asked one student which part of a review helped you the most, and he says, the boot camp, but overall, it's the functional concept and the syndromic approach, plus the quick fix and the core shell. So this is actually our core shell that summarizes and organizes all the tools so that you can access it anytime, anywhere. Now, this is being given for free access for all of those who are enrolled in our full bundle of instructional tools, which means it includes the books, it includes the face-to-face -face bootcamp, it includes our online videos, and of course, our course shell. And the third 
you have to have a conducive learning environment that should keep your focus, okay? So this is our class and the topmost portion is actually a picture taken of our learners using our NGN simulators in our simulation room, okay? So may I invite everyone to avail of our next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN, your choice of live face-to-face, -face, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank plus three books. And of course, the NGN strategies and sample questions of Ray Gapus, that's me, plus our quick fix session. And the fee starts at 3,499. 3, so once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gapus saying thank you for your opportunity and your time to join me in this teaching and learning session. Until my next video, you have to watch my next video if you want to shut down at 85 on NJN. Take care. Don't forget, Jesus loves you.